This is an interview for Well Crafted NC through UNCG's University Special Collections. And I'm here with Calder Pryor. He is the head brewer, president, and co-owner of Pryor Brewing Company. Mm -hmm. And I would like you to start just by introducing yourself a little bit. Um, I'm Calder Pryor. Uh, as you said, I'm the head brewer and president at Pryor Brewing Company. Um, I'm born and raised in Greensboro. Uh, I live in Summerfield now, but basically just lived in the Greensboro area my whole life. Um, and I really like to make beer. <laughs> How did you first become interested in the brewing industry? Um, it was when I was uh, 21 and had just started drinking uh, craft beers, really, and uh, decided I really liked drinking it, so I just wanted to figure out what it took to make it and start brewing beer at home and all that. And um, With the end goal of hopefully I can open a brewery someday, but mostly just I want to learn how to make beer. Why did you choose to open a brewery in downtown Greensboro? So downtown, we we really like being on the Greenway. When we were looking for different places to open the brewery, we always knew it was going to be Greensboro. Um, obviously, my two brothers are from Greensboro as well, and my wife is from Greensboro. We're all Greensboro born and raised, um, and we wanted to do something cool in our hometown. And when it came to downtown Greensboro, we just happened to find a good opportunity on the Greenway. Um, we really wanted to be in a more pedestrian focused kind of area if we could be. We didn't necessarily start out with the goal of we have to be downtown, but it just ended up that way. How do you view prior brewing in relation to your family's long history of business ownership in Greensboro? Um, so my family, my great, great grandfather invented Vic's Vapor Rub. Um, and for a long time they ran Vic Chemical Corporation until the 80s and there's a bunch of family history to that that I don't really know too well but um, we always joke that uh, we're back in the business of self-medication um, with the Vicks Vapor Rub thing and it's not something that um, we draw a lot of direct experience on but it's just something that uh, you know we have a beers named after my grandfather who uh, I guess is not quite in the frame of the shot um, but uh, we, we put a print on the bottom of all of our cans, People for Pryor, which is that's from when he ran for governor. Um, our porter is named after him, Lunsford Robust Porter is one of the tap handles right over there. Um, it's something that we just keep in mind when uh, just guiding the business and <laughs> trying to grow it and everything. Just uh, think about how our family's got kind of a history in Greensboro. Um, what challenges did you face while you were opening the brewery? Um, there's challenges at different phases. I mean, just uh, for a long time, figuring out what kind of education I wanted to get to help me on the process of opening a brewery. I ended up going uh, to get a degree in brewing instead of any kind of business degree or anything like that. Um, and then we got into the more serious. Um, the real estate search was really long and arduous. We looked at so many different places and had different buildings under contract and then things fall through and things change and just the whole real estate search but then overall just um, construction just there's so many different hurdles that you have to overcome whether it's permitting for construction or permitting for the brewery and all that stuff and just bureaucracy and legal hoops to jump through um, so I, I think the biggest challenge was probably just the construction process once we got to that just making sure that Everything happened on time and on budget, and that we got to where we needed to be in time to start brewing beer. Um, what is it like to work in the craft brewing industry? Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a lot of hard work, too. Um, a lot of people don't understand how much hard work goes into brewing beer. Um, I was here for 16 hours last Thursday brewing a double batch of beer. You know, they're just long hours some days, and it's really hot and sweaty in the brewery, but the reward is worth it. We get to make a really cool product. Like, I get to make all sorts of different beers since I'm the president of the brewery. And um, <laughs> I get to make I get to, I get to make uh, lots of different beers because uh, I have no one to answer to when it comes to our tap list. So I get to be really creative and do all sorts of different fun things. Um, and you meet lots of different people. Like the brewing industry is pretty cooperative for the most part. And you get to do fun things like brew beers with other breweries or just get lots of free beer or something like that. Free beer is definitely the best part, but uh, just making something satisfying with your hands. Like it's nice to get to the end of a long, hard day, like that 16 hour day 
and see a bunch of people in here in the tap room enjoying all the beer that I've been working hard to make and, you know, say, well, I made 20 more barrels today. So, it's the end of the day, you have a cool product that you made with your hands, put a lot of hard work and sweat into. What is your creative process like when you're deciding what kind of beers to make? Uh, it very varies greatly. Sometimes we're just saying, I want to brew an amber ale. Let's make the best amber ale we can. Sometimes it's like, I got a specific ingredient and I want to build a beer around that. Um, sometimes it's even like, you know, your senses are really tied to your memories and you might have this sort of sense memory you want to evoke with a beer where you're like sitting around a campfire, you know, just telling stories and you remember this one thing vividly in your head and you're trying to evoke that. So it's different for every beer. Uh, most of the time, uh, we're, we have... Like, the thing we've been doing a lot lately is our milkshake IPA. Um, lactose is unfermentable. You add it to a, a beer, it adds a sort of sweet, creamy mouthfeel. And we have a milkshake IPA base that we make, and we do something different with it every time. And so uh, the most recent one we made was the Mexican milkshake IPA. It's got uh, cacao nibs, cinnamon, cayenne, and lactose in it. And so we get to do something different with that. And I spent the morning planning our next batch with my wife about what we're going to do with the next batch of the milkshake IPA. So sometimes it's just you got a base beer and you do something weird with it every time or sometimes you just want to brew the best lager you can make or just depends. Um, so speaking of your wife, what is it like to run a family business in the brewing <laughs> industry? Um, most of the time it's great. Uh, I get to work with my wife and my two brothers and my parents are owners. They don't, They aren't employees but they're around a lot and you know uh, we all get together and have meetings and stuff like that and sometimes it can be a little frustrating because I go home at night and the co-worker that I might have had an argument with about what we do for our next milkshake IPA is my wife who I'm trying to, you know, we got to get dinner on the table for the kids and, uh, and get them to sleep after, you know, we didn't, you know, it's not like we have an argument about it but more just you're always working, especially with the family business. It's not like I go home and it's like, oh... And 99% of what my wife and I talk about that's not our kids is business. So, you know, we've always got, even when you run your own business, you can pretty much never turn it off anyways. But when you run it with your whole family, anytime you get together with your family, anytime, all that stuff is just always talking about the brewery. So it's hard to turn it off, but it's also great. I mean, I get to spend a lot of time with my wife and we bring our kids to work and I see my brothers every day. So it makes it easy to stay connected with your family. <laughs> How has the brewing scene changed since you first went into business? Well, we haven't been in business very long. We've been in business for two and a half years, but it is a time of pretty great flux for the brewing industry as a whole. Um, there's thousands more breweries that have opened up in the two and a half years, even since we opened. Um, there's a lot of consolidation from the bigger brewers buying up all of some of the smaller, well, they're still big breweries to us, breweries like Wicked Wee, but they're small breweries to, you know, Anheuser-Busch. So they're buying up smaller, smallish breweries that are still pretty big to us. And so there's just a lot of change, and especially... And then when it comes to the beer side, there's also change there with what's popular. I mean, IPAs are still really popular, but the type of IPA, you know, you see all these New England IPAs and these really hazy, cloudy sort of beers that have gotten really popular, and uh, just in the two and a half years has changed pretty drastically. Where do you see the brewing industry going in the next five years? People a lot smarter than me have a, have a hard time figuring that out. So I, I think it's really tough to say there's going to be... I think in the industry as a whole, perhaps there is a bubble approaching, but I think in our little area in Greensboro, I don't think that Greensboro has reached a point where it's got more breweries than it can sustain. So I think locally we're fine because we're not... We're not running the kind of brewery where we're trying to start a big regional brewer that's shipping to you know eight different states or anything like that. Um, we don't need to get very big to survive. So I think for the most part, what we're trying to do is going to be fine. But uh, it's going to be an interesting five years because it's I really truly have no idea. <laughs> How do you view your role in the community? Um, we like to think that we can give a lot back to the community too. Uh, we like to try and do a lot of charitable donations of beer or events in the tap room where we're raising money for charity. Um, otherwise, we're just we trying to have a nice, comfortable tap room where people can come meet and you know um, 
in these events have different types of people coming in from the community and sort of meeting here and getting together is just a comfortable space for people to get together. When it comes to what role we might play in that, we just have a nice comfortable space and hopefully make a delicious product that people want to come drink. Um, and then just a lot of the charitable stuff we like to do. Um, we like to get creative with it. Um, or for example, this month we're doing a dollar of every pour of our Lunsford Robust Porter is being donated to... Um, now I have to read it because I'm going to get in trouble if I don't remember. Jason William Hunt Foundation. It's the wilderness, uh, it's like a wilderness medicine awareness thing. Um, but we, we, and we do lots of uh, charitable donations of beer just to people like free beer. It's a good thing when someone's doing an off-site sort of event that they want to uh, either give away beer as part of it or sell beer or anything like that to help them raise money. We give away a lot of beer for that too. What is your favorite beer from a North Carolina brewery other than your own? Um, I don't get a chance to drink a lot of beer from anyone else these days, but I think going back, um, one of the first styles of beer that a lot of craft beer drinkers get into, but certainly me when I was uh, first drinking craft beer was IPA, and um, I think one of the ones that I still really love is the Foothills Hoppium, just their standard Hoppium IPA that you can get. Um, I really love that beer still do just don't get a chance to drink other people's beer very often these days and what is your favorite beer from your own brewery um that changes pretty much depending the standard answer i give people is whatever we have the most of because i don't have i don't pay for it so i don't want to drink something that we're on our last keg of it or something like that but right now we have a beer that we we started brewing a beer this summer that we keep on tap always now it's called harder better faster lager it's the first lager we've made uh, it's bottled after like a classic Czech Pilsner. Uh, we use all North Carolina barley in it. Um, so I think the lager that we make is now my current favorite that I drink the most of. I'm curious about your logo. It's very distinctive. The lioness. Um, the logo came from my younger brother Will does all of our art. Um, he screen prints tap handles and t-shirts and stuff in-house and he designs all of our logos and labels and all that. And uh, when we were first uh, going through the whole planning process, um, he did a lot of different logo treatments and stuff. Uh, we have a lion in our family seal, and he kept drawing a lot of lions and stuff, and he said, well, this all looks really cliched and bad. I don't really like the look of any of this. And so my wife said, uh, you know, why don't you try a lioness? They do all the work anyways. Um, she went to a women's college too, so she was all about that. And he said, sure, and he came back, and he was really happy with that and did a good job with that logo. So that's where the lioness comes from. 